<laughs> just to get ahead. <laughs> We'll call this uh, yeah, please don't. meeting of November 18th to order. Uh, Matt McDonald from City Church is here to give our invocation. I don't see Matt. I do not. Pastor Johnson's in the house. There's Stafford Moore, too. Oh, yeah. Pastor Stafford, yeah. Do paper, rock, scissors, see who's going down. And here's the uh, Calvin Berg. Bill. <laughs> Actually, I'm Bill. That's Bill. <laughs> well, we look alike. Uh, but you're, I'm better, no, you're better looking. Yeah, I, I say that all the time. <laughs> Let's look away to the Lord. Father, we thank you. We give your name glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity for us to come together and to discuss the items on this agenda. We pray for this meeting. We pray for this city. We pray for our our mayor and his cabinet and the citizens. And we ask that you would bring us together as one and unify us to do the things that you've caused us to do and that you sanctioned us to do for this city. We're just thankful for those that want to be here that couldn't be here, but we pray that this will be a successful meeting. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have three presentations this evening. The first uh, was actually left off your agenda, but it is a regular report from Planning and Zoning. And I think Bruce Skinner is going to give that tonight. Thank you, Bruce. Mr. Glenn sends his apologies, but he's got school board, and I understand he didn't want to deal with some of you. So, <laughs> so why'd you look at me? <laughs> because he mentioned you by name. Um, so we had our PNZ last Wednesday. There were uh, two requests for rezoning, and then a number of subdivision uh, plats that came forward. Uh, the two for rezoning both did pass. Uh, they did pass unanimously. I'm sorry, there was one abstention on one of those. Um, but those will be on your December 2nd agenda. The first one looks at um, Mount Auburn and South Kings Highway, right, um, rezoning from an, M, from an R4 to an M1. Uh, there's a desire to put a, um, an assisted living, particularly for individuals with memory issues there. Uh, the concern that was raised, and we did have someone speak against that, was under R4, there is a 40 foot limit. As we move to an M1, it goes to 60 feet. And so there were some questions about whether that would impact the line of sight for the radio station right there. Uh, the architect and the adjoining property owner were talking about that. Uh, the architect believes there's a way to address that, but there was, that is one concern that was raised with us. The second one looks at 1400 Cape West Drive, uh, Cape Rock Drive. This is Caddy Corner from the First Baptist Church. Uh, Ameren looks to put a uh, power substation there. There was some concern by some property owners. Again, this one did pass unanimously. There was some concern by some property owners of either uh, stormwater runoff, some question about wildlife that was raised, and then just the the aesthetics of what that would look like. Uh, Ameren has submitted a landscaping plan that exceeds all the city's requirements, uh, but there was still some concern by some uh, individuals. And then there were six uh, plat subdivisions. Uh, the Blattner Fifth subdivision plat uh, is combining three lots into two, uh, nine in favor, no abstentions. The Sleepy Hollow, this is behind the old Slumberland, subdividing that into two lots. We did have one, one um, council, I'm sorry, one commissioner vote against that because there was concern about an easement. Uh, staff addressed that on one of the, the drawings they had. Uh, the other eight commissioners didn't feel that there was an issue. Graves Linwood subdivision plat um, also passed as well as the West Broadway property. Uh, this is the one on Broadway and Pe uh, Perry right next to Kappa Hall Park, um, combining five lots in a vacated alley. Summers Castle subdivision record plat. Uh, this is east of 55 near Lazy El Safari combining three lots into one. And then the Kings Highway subdivision plat. Uh, this is the building that's right next to Smoothie King. Um, and in that one, they were uh, forming two new lots out of the existing plat. Again, that one passed as well, nine to zero. Okay, anybody have any questions of Bruce? Nope, thank you, sir. Thank you much. Get 
get old, you got to put your specs on. We have two proclamations this evening, and I'll come down front. The first is uh, against gender violence. Is anybody here? I knew they'd be here. I told them what, usually there's tape on this, so don't step over there. <coughs> Whereas, as citizens of this community, we recognize that the worldwide problem of violence against women occurs even here in Cape Girardeau. And whereas gender violence is traumatic to the body, mind, and spirit, and can prevent people from being fully active participants at home and in the world. And whereas gender violence devastates relationships, families, communities, workplaces, schools, neighborhoods, villages, cities, and towns. And whereas gender violence costs the nation billions of dollars annually in medical expenses, police and court costs, shelters and foster care, sick leave, absenteeism and non-productivity. And whereas in spite of some progress, we need only to look at our newspapers or watch television newscasts to see the unfortunate truth that gender violence has not yet been eliminated here or around the world. And whereas we support the efforts of individuals and organizations such as the Zonta Club of Cape Girardeau to raise awareness, stimulate discussion, and advocate for local solutions that will curb gender violence, and whereas these Zontians stand in solidarity with thousands of others from around the world to assert that right of women and men to be free of violence is a fundamental human right. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Bob Fox, mayor of the city of Cape Girardeau, do hereby proclaim these 16 days between International Day to Eliminate Violence Against Women on November 25, 2019, and International Human Rights Day on December 10, 2019, as the 16 days of activism against gender violence in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And I call upon all citizens and civic organizations to support work to end gender violence and eliminate the detrimental consequences that it has on the well being of our community. Thank you. Thank you. The next proclamation is for Small Business Saturday. Anybody here from downtown? Whereas Cape Girardeau celebrates our local small businesses and the contributions they make to our community. And whereas, oh, here we go. <laughs> the man has a lot to do with the business in our city. Absolutely. Whereas local small businesses form the backbone of our economy, generating jobs and improving the quality of life for all citizens, and whereas according to the United States Small Business Administration, there are currently 30.7 million small businesses in the United States, and they're responsible for 64.9% of net new jobs created between 2000 and 2018. And whereas small businesses employ 47.3% of employees in the private sector in the United States, and whereas Cape Girardeau recognizes the critical role of small business and supports the efforts of local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, cultivate and preserve our community. And whereas advocacy groups, as well as public and private organizations across the country have endorsed Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Bob Fox, Mayor of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, do hereby proclaim November 30th, 19, 2019 as Small Business Saturday and urge all residents of our community to not only support small business and merchants by shopping at these establishments on Saturday, but to support and strengthen our small business community throughout the year. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks. 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 Mm -hmm. 
We'll get into communication and reports. Uh, council? Don't anybody speak at once. Well, I will. Um, so, you know, we got an email last week and uh, the Missourian reported some good news about the airport. I just wanted to uh, congratulate all the city staff and the airport staff that were involved in uh, increasing our boardings this year and bringing some uh, extra much needed federal funds uh, uh, to assist with the airport. So Bruce and staff, great job. Next. Last Thursday, we had a meeting at uh, Greater Dimensions uh, with the pastors and some of the community people to uh, uh, come together and get uh, an idea of where we want to go and how we feel about things. And so it was really good. It was quite a few people there. Well, how do you feel about that? Feel good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, they came out, so we had a community conversation town hall Great. meeting. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Anybody else? I'd just like to recognize last Friday, Cape Girardeau was well represented at the Missouri State High School swimming and diving competition with two teams. Um, placing with Cape, Cape Central swimming and diving team getting second overall, and Notre Dame's resurgence getting ninth overall in the state. So, okay. says well a lot for Cape Girardeau. Mm -hmm. I know Central was disappointed they didn't get that fourth consecutive state championship, but second was pretty close. It's quite a run. Quite a run. Anybody else? I was on. Um, Last Thursday, I had the opportunity to be on uh, Facebook Live with the Cape Chamber uh, talking about sales tax in our community and the impacts. Um, gave a different perspective for me being on city council and in the banking segment. And I uh, uh, had a good discussion with Jacob Pallison with the um, uh, business incubator with the university on behalf of the chamber. So good. got a bunch of budget numbers out and talked about all that fun stuff. <laughs> All that fun stuff. Budgets are always fun to talk about. Uh, I had a neat experience this week. I got to uh, paint the panel on the mural that's being done for the Bicentennial Paint for a Cause. And uh, I also, uh, Aaron Horrell and, uh, and Barb Bailey are doing this. They were here early in the year and gave us a, a presentation. It's going well. They have surpassed the Guinness Book of World Records for a number of people that have painted already. And uh, there are well over 6,000 and headed for maybe 15,000 before that project's finished. Uh, they are, uh, I mean, it's really dedication on their part to go into schools and spend almost all day at a school having the kids and teachers paint a little triangle on this on this mural, which is uh, it's 12 feet by 30 feet and it's broken up into four by six pieces and on each piece they have uh, made into squares and then actually hand done a triangle on each square so you can only paint one triangle and uh, then you get to sign the book and uh, the book and the, the mural will be there forever for people to see as we celebrate our bicentennial in August of 2021. Uh, I, I did uh, uh, set up a program for them to come to Noon Optimist so they can uh, have some Optimist sign it and they're looking for, they're trying to raise money to to be able to do this all over the state. So it's a neat project. Uh, Friday, the uh, Zonta Club, and I should have mentioned this while they were here, although they're aware of it, they had their Woman of Achievement banquet at the uh, convention center and it was packed. Uh, a really, really neat thing. For them to recognize women in our community and in the area who do a lot for the community and do a lot for the Zonta Club and it was a neat, neat event and uh, some some uh, great women were recognized. Uh, Saturday night uh, had the uh, another neat event that was the Stars and Stripes uh, Spirit for Democracy uh, banquet at the Arena Building raising money for the uh, Stars and Stripes Museum in Bloomfield and uh, a lot of people were not aware that that if you're a veteran you know what Stars and Stripes magazine is. If you're overseas 
Uh, it's something you receive on a pretty regular basis to keep track of what goes on in your country. And they have even some local aspects to that. Uh, it was interesting hearing from some of the veterans talk and you know, one of them in particular said, I was looking at baseball scores overseas and, and this was years ago. And he says the Cardinals were doing horrible. But then I got home a few months later and they were in the World Series. <laughs> so news does not travel fast, but nowadays it's a little different because people have the internet and everything else, but they still appreciate that magazine. And it was started in 1861 in Bloomfield, Missouri during the Civil War. And if you've never been to that museum, it's really a neat thing to see. So if you get a chance, go down there. Uh, this week, uh, you know, we're kind of headed into the holiday season. The Missouri clerk and finance officers have a quarterly meeting here and Cape Girardeau on Thursday, and I'm going to talk to them a little bit. The Chamber of Commerce annual dinner is Thursday this week. Uh, Thanksgiving is upon us, and I just want to tell everybody happy Thanksgiving and have don't eat too much, and don't get uncomfortable. I didn't. I don't have anything else. Scott, nothing covered it all. Covered it all. Yep. Holy cow. Uh, we'll get into items for discussion and. And one of the things I wanted to discuss as a council and uh, uh, encourage people to give us maybe some insight uh, is about TTF-6. And, uh, you know, it, it's unusual. You know, the TTF-6 committee gave us a report and actually gave us two different recommendations. And that's, that's kind of unusual because it gives you a little leeway as to which way you want to go. And... Uh, at the same time, uh, we have, I hope, I hope it's a good chance to get an opportunity grant to pay for half of a big project that's, that's one of those projects. Uh, but one of the big things that came up and was brought to my attention by a couple of people was the fact that in our past two tax renewal referendums, the Parks and Rec Stormwater, and the capital improvements, we extended each of those projects uh, five years, from 10 years to 15 years. And we did that uh, for a reason. We did it because, number one, the community supports those things, and number two, uh, the, pr the projects were there that needed to be done. And the only way we, as a council, felt they could be done is if we extend it and incorporate all those projects as part of it. They said, well, would you do this with TTF? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, it's, it's something to think about. It was not uh, mentioned you know, to the TTF committee. They never thought about anything more than five years. Uh, personally, it, in my mind, it has been very successful as a five-year renewal because it, it uh, shows the public that you are doing what you say you're going to do, and uh, and we do that way, and we do it, and we pay for it as we go. And you know, I, when you have the public trust in something that's gone on for five times over 25 years, uh, you don't want to lose that public trust. And I and I think we have that public trust when it comes to roads. Now, granted, uh, our roads and streets, a lot of places, uh, are deteriorating at a more rapid pace. Uh, because they've been there longer and we have to catch up. Part of that catching up was including half a million dollars a year for 15 years in the capital improvements plan that, you, that the voters approved this year. Uh, that $3.5 million will really help that. Uh, you know, as to whether or not we want to consider adding a year or two on the TTF to, to encompass a particular project. That's uh, you know, something we have to weigh as a council and have to get input from the public on. Uh, any thoughts from council? I, I personally agree with you. I, I think uh, the public trust is with a five-year time frame. I don't think we should change that. Uh, it's, it's worked well over the past five iterations of TTF, and so I think we should stick with that five-year window. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, certainly there are advantages to extending it two years. You know, you get another $10 million to put into projects. But 
Um, I, I agree that I think we've, uh, you know, over, t you know, 24, almost 25 years now and five iterations of this tax, uh, voters have uh, put their trust in, in the, the leadership of, of CAPE to, um, you know, finish the projects that they said they were going to do. And I think if we uh, start playing around with that now, um, we could get ourselves into uh, uh, some issues. So I think my personal opinion is um, we, we, we stick with five years and um, work it out from there. Now, again, I think there is a, a bit of a caveat to that. You know, if uh, the, the grant funding uh, comes along, you know, are we kind of then beholden to finish that project and how much of that, uh, I, I can't remember the exact uh, matching funds, but how much of TTF would we be burning on matching funds for that and would something else fall as a result of moving uh, those up? So that might be the only inst instance where I would say it might be beneficial to look at extending the tax, but that's one of those things that I think you're going to have to wait on right up until the deadline to, to determine whether those grant funds came or not. Well, and, one of, and I may be understanding it wrong, but I think that's something we might have to have to consider. At that one point. of the proposals was uh, to do land acquisition, engineering and all that stuff uh, as part of that. And the grant would would basically be the rest of that money to finish that project. Uh, you know, there are, there are so many projects out there to do, but at the same time, uh, as I look back at, at TTFs one through five, and you look at, uh, the projects that have been done over that 25 years, uh, there have been several new projects. Uh, LaSalle was a new project, part of, uh, uh, Three sections of there are four sections of Veterans Memorial Drive or new projects. Uh, Walnut Street was a new project. Uh, I mean, a new street. Uh, a lot of the big projects that are that are projected to be done: Lexington, uh, Sprig, uh, Independence Street, are current streets we have that we're just we're redoing. And I and I look at that. I don't look at that as new projects. I look at that as fixing what we have. In some respects, uh, in some instances, you're you're not only fixing it; you're maybe making it wider. You may be, you know, Mount Auburn's one we made wider. Uh, it was there, and we've just gone in and improved that. Uh, so, you know, at this point, I'm just trying to stimulate discussion to see what you all think, and if you have any other ideas. And I would uh, agree with your sentiment about not going to seven right now um you know the the committee the group the the plans that they came up with are in line with what and I, we've talked about it before they're in line with what the residents have wanted and that is fix what you've got this is an, an unprecedented amount of repair to existing streets in this with with, with a portion of a couple of new projects um vmd and and the College Minnesota is that the one also so I, I think that I think that between and and the one thing and I can't find it here and I and but Nate and I had uh, looked at it and that is you know if you really look at the city survey that was done I think there were 260 residents were only four projects that were were actually voted as being uh, a priority I mean, every there are a lot. There are going to be some projects that we're going to do that residents didn't think were a priority, and I think that's I think that has to do with um, people just want things fixed. And um, but this definitely the list that was brought to to us definitely addresses that. It, I think eighty eight percent of the funds going to essentially repair. There aren't. There weren't really major projects, right? Uh, yeah, I, that thirteen million that they designated toward repairs and maintenance, plus the additional three and a half million, you know, is a, is two or three times what it was in the past, and and it's just going to give us a chance to catch up 
on on things that need to be done. And at the same time, you know, with everything else going on, there's just a lot going on with all the stormwater projects, with the parks projects, with City Hall, with the projects going on at the airport. Uh, it seems like it's almost constant. There's always something going on. Anybody else? No? Well, at this point, we'll just wait and see what Scott. I was just going to mention uh, from a staff perspective, if if the consensus of council is that staying with five years, then we could go ahead and prepare uh, the ordinance calling that election for five. It doesn't mean that you have to be nailed down with every single project yet because the actual ordinance doesn't spell out projects. We uh, spell those out in an information campaign. So there is some time to kind of wait and see what happens with the uh, governor's uh, program and then determine those projects based on the budget. Uh, Scott, and will that be, should that be around the middle of December? Is that the estimation? January. Yeah, they're saying, at first they did say the grant. December, and then uh, I think they had more applicants than they thought they would have, and so they're now saying this, uh, January. But uh, we won't start an information campaign until, you know, after the new year. So I think uh, it would be acceptable to wait until well, after guess, we hear from that. I guess the question is, is that we, we have to have our ballot language done by, what, January 27th to, for it to go on the April ballot, Eric? Uh, the, the first reading of the ordinance would be uh, scheduled to be the second meeting in December. It would be the latest. And, 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 and go regular through the regular meetings. procedures. Yeah, using regular meetings. The, uh, the the last regular meeting we could commence with would be the second meeting in December. For an actual list of projects? No, you no, don't have to no, do that's that. Just for that's just calling the election. Just, just calling the election. election. So, so okay. what I'm hearing is if you're okay with calling the election, we could even start that now you know, in, at the next meeting. I definitely calling, calling the, election. the election at five would, would five. be my recommendation. I would be the same. So we will put that on next agenda as calling election for five years, and then we can continue to work on exactly what those end those projects. But from what I'm hearing from council members, um, there's pretty good agreement on the uh, maintenance portion and, and that recommendation. There's pretty good agreement on really the whole recommendation. It just comes down to whether or not to do uh, VMD or the second spring project. And that's kind of what I hear people struggling with uh, back and forth. Um, but I don't hear much. I've heard, you know, oh, this would be nice to get this project. But I haven't heard a consensus on, a, on, on any other changes other than those two things, which I think I'm also hearing um, they'd really like to see what those grants weigh in before they decide on that. Well, I've also heard from a number of constituents, you know, you work with what, has worked in the past, and that's a five-year TPS. Okay. I was just going to ask a point of clarification that um, the the whatever we get, whatever comes of the grant process, that's going to throw a whole wrinkle in everything, correct? Because that would drastically increase the amount of money we'd have to put towards the VMD project versus the option A and option B that the committee presented to us. No, it'll be it'll be the the option that would throw 2.5 million toward it. We get we there are two options right now. Option A is 2.3 million, and then option yeah, B the other is 200,000. Yeah, so it would be the larger option amount. A, we would have to uh, essentially 200,000 for to get the match, correct? Right. Your other yeah. option would be not accept the grant. Yeah, don't do we, it now. Didn't we apply for the grant? Weren't there two applications? One to do the whole VMD project, and the second to do just the um, Kings Highway. One application to was to do half of the project south from Hopper Road South. Mm -hmm. The other was for the full amount yeah. from the Sportsplex North. But that that is different from what's in this proposal. Yes, that's not even in this proposal. Right. So right, and that's the reason we asked for 100% on that, although yes, we as we've gotten more clarification, we might would have, if we would get that grant, they are saying now that we would maybe have to do some some of the right of way. And so there there may be some, you know, to find out more about that, we'll be refining those estimates and, and getting you more information. 
Um, but we really want to find out where we are because, as the mayor said, we could reject the grant if, if at that point it just isn't uh, tenable. But uh, we think it's, we think it's tenable. Um, both of them it would at this be hard point, unless something it would be hard to reject. Up. Amount of money like that that's a grant that's hey, that, yeah, and that's what I was getting at is if we're getting that, we need to leverage the grant money, the, right. the state grant money. But well, that's what I that's, just was wondering how much of a wrinkle it And that's what the state is doing, uh, and that's why it's highly unlikely that they would like to take this 50 million dollars in grant money and do a hundred to 150 million dollars worth of work. And you can't do that giving 100 percent money to a project. So the chances of getting 100 percent on a project according to what the governor told me was slim to none. So, so my, uh, my question, and, and I'm sorry if I missed you, this. So the portion of BMD South from Hopper, essentially to finish it down at the convention center. Um, uh, I understand that part of it is part of that grant to look at the traffic flow that's going to be created around that little weird intersection there that, that that pops out on the king's highway you know where starbucks is and all those little i mean that's the weirdest intersection in Canada. Yeah, okay no no this would connect it to percy drive this would connect it to percy there at the convention center they would make that connection and then everything else would stay the same okay but it gives people the option of taking percy to mount auburn taking percy to the street that comes Ferrar. up on yeah, Farrar. Uh, or, or bringing it all, taking it or all the way around. Or if you're going somewhere else in town, going left and going up to the stoplight at Independence. And, and I now, just know that weird intersection there. But there's a weird intersection. There's a lot of weird intersections. <laughs> I mean, you got to. Anyway. Yeah, you can quote me on that. There's a lot of weird intersections. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Anybody here tonight to uh, appear before the council for an item that is not on the agenda? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. I'm Dorothy Lancaster. I live at 816 Hunsey in Cape. I'm here to talk about the water situation, the, um, the water drainage at my house. Thank you, Mayor. Fox and City Council for allowing me to speak. I'm no stranger to Cape. I'm from Southeast Missouri and I graduated from Southeast. There's a total of three houses on our street. We have a real short street. Uh, I was there first in 2005. That's when we moved here. And uh, the second house was built after I moved in. The last house was built next to me in a new house in 2018. The builder was Aaron Roth. The last house is why I'm here. The problem is water drainage. This has been a problem since last March. The builder built the yard up higher and didn't put in a culvert. He made it impossible for the ditch to drain because he filled in the ditch area. Hundy's a short street and before the house, the new house was there, the water would drain down Hunsey in the ditch, past my house, and go on to the ditch that was on Old Hopper. Now, water comes in front of the, of the new house because there's no culvert. It passes the new house and comes right in my drive. Um, it brings lots of water, leaves, so forth. I met the builder when he was building the house, and I explained that I had a small water problem when the big rains came, there would be water in front of my garage. He said, well, when this house is finished, it may be better. In fact, I guarantee it won't be worse. It got worse. I had to buy boots. I wear boots when I go to my mailbox in the morning to get my paper. I wear them again when I go to the mailbox in the afternoon to get my mail. Uh, friends have wet shoes when they are, come to my door to visit, sometimes they just can't come. When he finished with the yard, he had this big drain pipe sticking up, pointed at my house. It took weeks to get him to move it. Finally, he came to my house on April the 15th to tell me he had moved it. I thanked him. 
Then he said he was going to dig this ditch from my garage to the bigger ditch and put a pipe in it so that the water would drain. He did, and that didn't work. While he was there, he also said, my dad and I are going to redo your lawn because of this water damage. That's the last I've seen or heard from him. I contacted Stacy Kinder. She checked with the city and was told I was on my own, but she and her son did clean off the driveway and I appreciate it very much. It was very kind of her. I've talked to Gary Middleton several times. He decided to clean out the ditch. He had it done. And later I thought, why did he do that? The ditch has been stopped up right past my mailbox because the builder closed it off. Luke Malahi and another gentleman came and suggested a speed bump. Later, Gary Middleton called or texted me and said that he'd done all he could do for me. Mayor Fox came to see the problem on October 30th. I haven't heard from him. I was disappointed because I was anxious to hear his thoughts. A month ago, I was really scared because it was raining on a Saturday. It rained and rained and rained, and I was so afraid the water was going to get in my garage. It came very close. I've lived in Cape since 2005 and never had these problems until this new house was built. Something needs to be done. I have some questions for the city. Number one, isn't a permit required to build a house? Two, is water drainage even considered? And here's the big one, I think. Number three, did the builder have a permit to do away with the function of the ditch? Four, did the builder have permission from the city to cause me the stress and pain? This has really bothered me physically, trouble sleeping, and it's on my mind all the time. Number five, does the city consider that the value of our property is in danger? And here's something to think about, talking about the damage. It is not moral what's been done, but it may be legal. It's not ethical what's been done with all this water, but it may be legal, but it is wrong that a developer can destroy uh, and also ruin my property. I don't know how the city will answer these questions tonight, but here's what I think. Regardless of whether the issues I've described are covered either with state law or city municipal code or simply subject to golden rule, the city cannot approve one project to the detriment of another. I'm certain that this was unintentional, but the consequences to my home have been the same. One of the joys of owning a home is the pride of ownership, and I feel that's been taken from me. I feel uh, people can't even come to see me without wading through mud and water. A second ownership perk is that regardless of the circumstances, most of us sell our home with the hope that it will appreciate in value. I think any real estate agent would tell you that this would not be a selling feature. I fear that this is something else I've lost. All I ask of you on the council tonight is to do the right thing. I have to believe that any permits or approvals you provided started a chain of events to my detriment. Please make this right and do what it takes to correct the problem you began. I thank you. I've been there and I've looked at it and, and I see what uh, Gary meant by a speed bump because what her issue is now is that the water comes down the street and because the next property has the yard's been built up the water cannot go in that yard it's been diverted in the street and then it comes right down her driveway a bump there would divert that water from coming down her driveway unless it was a lot of water and it's still going to go over it and I don't know as a city when somebody does, when they change the uh, the flow of the the water, when when they brought dirt in and raised that up, being only a short street, you know, I guess it you know, there was a mistake made, and they just never thought about what what would happen in the future with water that can't come to that house. Now it's all diverted down to her house, and I'm not sure if the city has any jurisdiction to 
make somebody come back and redo their yard and lower it and put a ditch in to catch that water. That's what needs to be done. We went through this. Yeah, and, and um, unfortunately, we um, have been through this and had uh, an extensive uh, discussion about how subdivisions are, are built and then divided, and then the person who buys a lot can, uh, to a degree, as allowed by state law, they can they can build up their lot and and do things that happen by that and then really when they do that it's a civil matter and uh, you, you mentioned that it and that's probably what people meant when they said uh, uh, it's your problem um, I, I don't know I haven't looked at it personally and I don't know if anybody at this in any staff member has actually looked at this one personally um, I know we, Gary's been there and a couple of times unfortunately I don't think Gary's here here but um, or to can speak to it, but uh, we'll, we'll certainly look at it and see. But it, it does sound a lot like one of those things where a, a lot was sold off of the subdivision. Uh, they made drainage uh, changes, and um, there's it, it may well be that there's nothing we can do. But we'll look at it and see if we can and see what see what uh, it is. Obviously, taxpayers have you know are on the other side of this that so we can't go out and solve everyone's. Uh, drainage problems between civil matters between lots and things it's just not um, not right for taxpayers to pay for that and so that's the, the reason for the position but I know that's not a not what you want to hear um, but we will personally we will have somebody come out and take a look at it and double check to make sure that uh, in fact that's what we are I don't stand if you any aware of it uh, at all But uh, if you'd meet with her and let her know, you'll have somebody come out and we'll, we'll take a, a, a look at it and ex do, our, do our best to explain exactly the way it is. And um, I understand where you, you come from. It's hard to tell people, well, it's a civil matter. You have to take one someone to court. Um, but oftentimes that's the answer when it comes to, to managing stormwater that is beyond our control. And I would say that this isn't, this is an uncommon we ran in, I'm sure most helpful people we ran into this with other other people too um, and it's the worst feeling to have to tell a resident that's going through this that you, you need to sue your neighbor I mean we don't have drainage easements I'm looking at your street right now I know we don't have a drainage easement right there and and personally I've been out to seven residents in my in, in my ward and had to say we legally don't have a right to do anything to that property because there is not a drainage easement. And that is a tough thing to have to tell a resident. Then why do we need a permit to do something to our property? I mean, like they had to have a permit to build a house. Why do I have to have a permit if it doesn't mean anything? The permit has nothing to do with the water coming off of, of that lot. And that's legally it, it does not it doesn't and we and we've and we've had we discussed this at other council meetings numerous times about that um it would take i mean i would venture to say if we started going retroactively back to every drainage easement that we could own it would be hundreds of millions of dollars in that we just we don't have and it doesn't fiscally make sense now, it's not the answer you want to hear uh, believe me, I've had to look at people in my ward, a dozen of them or more, and tell them the same exact thing, that unfortunately when these neighborhoods were built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, whenever, there were no there, there, there were no rules and regulations. Yeah. Well, this was in 2005. Yeah, and the, re and the recent 2018, I, I mean, I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But, uh, We've had subdivision, whole subdivisions yeah. built since then that have issues because the property has changed hands two or three times and someone combines lots and changes the, and there's two or three other places in the city right now where there's lawsuits going on between property owners because of changes that have been made. So uh, You said it became a civil matter. What would you suggest that she do? Should she get an attorney? Should she go back against the builder? Should she go back against the people that bought the house? Well, she can't go against people that bought the house because well, they didn't create the problem. So, so she should get a lawyer. I wouldn't give her legal advice. Well, <laughs> first off, we wouldn't want to give you legal advice. What I would do is I would call an attorney. 
That's my legal advice. Okay. I wish, I wish, I wish as a city we'd go in and fix every issue we have like that, but absolutely, we can't. Anybody else? For any item that's not on the agenda. If not, I will ask uh, Scott to go through the agenda review. On the consent agenda tonight, we have the uh, the minutes, and then we have the second and third readings of the record plat for Dornay uh, subdivision from last time. We have the second third reading for the liquor license review board uh, and appeals um, from last time that's been discussed, and um, then we have the second and third reading of the special tax bill for uh, 1018 Good Hope. That's uh, a building that was uh, uh, demoed, and now then we're Adding, adding that to the tax bill to get the taxpayers' money back. Uh, and then we have the second and third reading for 623 North Main Street, uh, the zoning of that property uh, for the Reynolds House. And uh, the last consent agenda item is the award of the, um, the design bill to uh, Penzo Construction Company for the City Hall. What are items you'd like to uh, remove or discuss further from the consent agenda? Okay. If, if not, uh, we have new ordinances. Number seven is the, um, yes. On number uh, three, mm -hmm. just a, a follow-up question from uh, the last meeting. Yes. What would be the timeline for this? When would we appoint those three uh, members and when would they be uh, in action? I was going to mention that in memos. Empowered into I was going to mention that in yeah. memos tonight. Okay. Uh, if you want to know, uh, we are... Uh, going to encourage people to apply with or just like they would any other citizens uh, advisory board using those forms online uh, we will uh, have a memo at our first meeting in December showing those people that have applied the appointment will be made the 16th of December at our second meeting we want to move quickly to, in order to uh, have those filled so that if an, an appeal happens because you never know exactly when they're going to happen we don't anticipate any of you before then so um I think that'll work. Good question though. Thank you. Uh new ordinance uh, item number seven is a uh, ongoing agreement we have with the county to collect uh, our portion of the uh, county taxes. Uh, they do that for a fee. It's regulated by state law. And so uh with having a new finance director and they have a new uh a collector, they need new signatures and they've uh, amended it a little bit to reflect uh new state law. And one of the things they amended is they, um, uh, they don't want to collect for the PACE program, which is an energy efficiency program, which has uh, um, a, a point where they can have the county collector collect for those energy efficient things, and they just don't want to be involved in that. So they've added that to the agreement as well. Um, the uh, number eight is uh, the record plat you heard of. Uh, Dr. Skinner talked earlier about uh, that uh, record plat and turns uh, three three sections into two uh, and takes, basically takes a common area and splits it up to, to a duplex. Um, number nine is the uh, West Broadview properties. This is that uh, property at uh, Broadview and Perry that takes uh, all those properties together, five properties, and makes them into one lot. Um, number 10 is the Blattner Fifth Subdivision. Uh, this is Back behind the mall, there's uh, there's three spray. three there, and those two. Spray. And uh, number eleven is the uh, King's Highway subdivision. That's the one he talked about next to Smoothie King. And then number twelve is the um, uh, changing of uh, and establishing no parking anytime along both sides of Normal Avenue uh, between um, Pacific and Henderson. So that's that uh, that's all the new ordinances okay uh, we have the appointments no appointments tonight um, and then we have uh, several memos for you about uh, end of year analysis uh, public safety transportation trust fund and then the uh, adjustment for river campus board and the show me center board um, one of the things that might want to weigh in with council I just thought about was river campus board and show me center board are not limited by 
um, are term limits uh, because of their makeup. Um, however, uh, in the more recent past, uh, some councils have encouraged new people to be involved, uh, although we have had the city manager as part of those boards uh, and, and that has remained, but uh, might be something you want to think about. I think Dennis Folink is up uh, on uh, the River Campus Board and then my slot's up on the uh, Show Me Center board. But uh, nothing you need to decide tonight, but just uh, to uh, think about. Um, that's all I have, Mayor. Okay. At this point, we will call the regular session to order, and I'll have the call to order and roll call. Ryan Essex. Here. Bob Fox. Here. Robbie Gard. Here. Stacy Kinder. Here. Shelly Moore. Here. Dan Preston. Here. Nate Thomas. Here. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Dan, second by Shelley. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, there are no public hearings tonight, and uh, I think we do have some individuals here to make comments about an item that's on the agenda this evening. I think this relates to 19-185, uh, which has to deal with uh, parking along Normal Avenue up on the university campus. Sir. Uh, so we're students from PLA, which is President's Leadership Academy at the university. Would you just uh, please state your name? And... Oh, my name is Andrew Marler. Uh, I'm Caleb White. I'm Maya Lindell. Hi, I'm Erica Bone. And I'm Alex Bargain. Okay. Um, and so <clears throat> we're here tonight to talk about um, item 12 on the agenda, and we just wanted to show our support for it. Um, we were tasked by Dr. Bilo, Dr. Skinner, and Ms. Comfort um, to create a project for the university um, to better campus. And this was one of the ideas that we came up with, and then when we caught wind that you guys were already thinking about it, we just wanted to come and show our support and back you guys. Um, and Caleb has some statistics, just kind of help, you know, uh, our, our cause. So. Hi, I'm uh, Caleb White. I'd really like to uh, thank you once again for letting us come and speak. Um, my good friend, uh, Myla Lindell and I, we went out personally and took some statistics. Um, and I'd like for you all to uh, please keep in mind that this was on a Thursday at uh, midday about noon, which for those of you who have been on campus is a relatively slow time. So the numbers are usually much higher. Um, in total, over the course of an hour, there were about 1,356 pedestrians that walked across the two main crosswalks there on Normal <laughs> Avenue. And there were only about 448 cars, so there's three times as many people walking across the road as there are drivers. Uh, there are currently, both legal and illegal, 70 spots there on Normal Avenue. There are 48 legal spots, and there are people parking in 25 illegal spots. Um, one thing I'd also like to mention is that 28 of those people parked in the 78 spots are resident parking, meaning they have other places that they can legally park on campus. And 42 of them have no permit at all. However, um, DPS has assured us that there is perimeter parking, parking and enough um, for them to be, uh, for them to have a parking spot. Even if Don't they get tickets when they park there? Or illegally? The, uh, the illegal parking spots? Yeah. Or if they don't have a sticker? Um, no. The Normal Avenue actually is not, you do not need any sort of permit to park there, considering that it is not um, under the Department of Public Safety. Okay. It is a city street. Okay. Um, so, yes, there's no, no permit actually required. However, if the street is closed, there is enough spots on campus for those who have a permit, and there are also enough perimeter spots for those who do not have a permit. Um, and we're open to any questions that you might have. I think this is a good conversation to have, especially given the presentation that we had from Kayla Patek a couple of weeks ago, the student with visual impairments. Uh, you know, Normal Avenue is a city street, and whenever you've got students that are, in, are parking, uh, parked cars infringing on crosswalks and, and making visibility difficult at the top of that hill where 1,356 students are walking across the street, possibly 1,356 students walking across the street with their face in their phone. 
Um, and, and so that's, that's what we've got to realize is that this is a changed pedestrian environment than we've had in decades prior. And so it's, a, it's great to hear this concern from a group of students. I don't have anything else. I just had the question about the tickets and the permits. So you answer that. There's no any other questions. I have a question for Chief Blair. What's enforcement going to look like? Um, uh, how, how quickly do we feel people will catch on to the no parking? Um, I don't know how quickly they'll catch <laughs> on, but we will we'll do no parking enforcement in that area. Okay. Just as we routinely do no parking enforcement throughout the city, we'll, we'll do it very quickly. Does the university have authority to also cite parking violations on our streets? Yes, yes, they do. That helps. Is that something that DPS will, will take up as well? The um, uh, no parking enforcement along normal? Yes, we'll support the city in every effort. Has there been any discussion or vision about how this might change that part of campus? Or, you know, I mean, just moving to a, a pedestrian only? So, um, well, it's, it's not pedestrian only, I guess. It's just no, not, it wouldn't not be pedestrian parking. only. It would just right. take away the parking aspect of right. it. And as Dan said, when you're on top of the hill, there's people fly up the hill and it's a blind zone. Um, and he's not wrong. Most people that walk across the street are on their phones or they're not paying attention or no they're judgment. talking to friends. Right. But yeah, but no, it would, it would get rid of the blind zones and it would make access to the crosswalks a lot easier. People would be able to see what is coming up the hill, what is coming down the hill mm -hmm. when we're walking across. Okay, so it's really just a kind of a safety yeah. issue that we're talking about. Thank you. You have to come to the mic. Hi, me, Ramona Bailey. Okay, I'm just kind of wondering, so that's a pretty much done deal, no parking on normal, like? No. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So I'm a student and I don't live on campus. And if I need to come to the library or library or something at the UC or whatever, I don't want to have to park behind Dempster just to run into the library for whatever a certain amount of time. So um, I'm thinking of the cone things you guys put downtown to let you know people are walking by, you know, to know that you're supposed to stop for pedestrians. Could that be an alternative? Because I don't see how taking all the parking way. I mean, maybe some sort of time parking, meter park or something. And I remember getting plenty of tickets back when I was in college before for parking on the street. We're in a no parking zone, but it looked like a regular parking spot. <laughs> and, but it was closer to the building I was going to. So I know, yeah, I racked up plenty of money, uh, tickets uh, for paying for those from the city and some from the, from the university too. But I'm going to say it, I know it's a maybe different time. People looking down on their phones, but putting up some sort of like we did downtown, that the pedestrian has the right of way, you know, maybe that would be another option besides absolutely no parking normal. That's already, you know, people, some people don't want to. about public parking. Yeah, like where are people going to park if we, yeah, I mean, I pay for the, I did wiser this time. I went ahead and bought a, <laughs> bought a parking <laughs> permit, <laughs> so I didn't rack up that money. But I'm just saying, this is something to kind of consider if, people just no parking at all where would they park if they are going to the use the library or something like that yeah, or go to I, academic or great question where can i park it's like are. president vargas's spot <laughs> 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 we'd love to answer your question yeah you want me to say um, so we're not talking about taking away all parking. There is parking, um, both metered and public, right behind uh, Kent Library itself, right by the doors. There's also down the hill right next to the UC. Also, there's parking right behind um, Academic as well. So there's still plenty of parking around. We're just talking about the ones directly on the street. Also, uh, yeah, there is, there's clearly painted um, curbs as to where to park and where not to park along with signs. So it's been made clear people just aren't following. You think there's a parking problem in Southeast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir, I would say there is. There's not a ton of parking behind academic either. Just kind of worried about eliminating 70 spots when you already have a parking problem in Southeast. 
Thank you very much. My name is John Voss. I live at 834 Alta Vista Drive. I'm a former council member, as many of you know, and a resident near the university. I live two houses down from the gum tree, if you know where the gum tree is at. With these 70 spots currently being open to anyone in the city of Cape Girardeau, not just a student on their phone, we have a parking problem on Alta Vista. And I'm that guy that calls every week to try and get an enforcement on a no parking eight to four on my street. And rarely are we able to get someone to come out in the amount of time when that student is parking there, goes to class, comes and gets in their car and leaves before an enforcement officer can come. My understanding, and I asked this question back when I was on council, I do believe the Department of Public Safety at the university has the authority to issue tickets on public streets. I would ask you to ask them, how many times have they done that? They don't. We don't enforce the yellow striped places along the streets that we have. There are parking violations every single day at the university. And to your point, Mr. Gard, if I didn't live next to the university and couldn't walk to the library or walk to academic to have a conversation with one of our educators, where am I supposed to park? The logic that they're offering today is to eliminate public parking along a street to increase pedestrian safety. I could make that exact same argument on every single street in this city and we would have a real parking problem. These students are coming to the university to get educated. I find it really frustrating that they can't read a sign that says no parking. So I will ask you to vote no on eliminating this parking. I will be sure to share this with my neighbors and I believe that we'll be back here to have additional perspective on this at your next meeting. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we will move on. Uh, consent agenda. Eric? Number 19-165, an ordinance proven record plan of journey lane subdivision, ordinance proven record plan of journey lane subdivision. Number 19-166, an ordinance meeting chapter five of the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, regarding the Liquor License Review Board and Appeals, an ordinance meeting chapter five of the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, regarding the Liquor License Review Board and Appeals. Number 19-167, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 1018 Good Hope Street for the demolition of a dangerous building under the provisions of chapter seven of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. An ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 1018 Good Hope Street for the demolition of a dangerous building under the provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Verde, Missouri. Number 19 168, an ordinance meeting Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Verde, Missouri by changing the zoning of property located at 623 North Main Street in the City and County of Cape Verde, Missouri from M1 PD and R4 to CBD. An ordinance meeting Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by changing the zoning of property located at 623 North Main Street in the City and County of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, from M1 PD and R4 to CBD. Number 19-169, an ordinance authorizing city manager to execute an agreement for professional and construction services with Pencil Construction Company, Inc. for the new city hall located at 44 North Lormer in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. An ordinance authorizing city manager to execute an agreement for professional and construction <coughs> services with Pencil Construction Company, Inc. for the new city hall located at 44 yeah. North Lormer in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Yeah. yeah. You have before you the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Dan, seconded by Robbie. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. New ordinances. Bill number 19 180, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with the county of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, the clerk of the county commission, and the county collector for tax collection services. In the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. So moved. Moved by Robbie. Second. Second by Nate. Sure. I didn't hear you said that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you guys sound just alike. <laughs> Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Bill number 19 181. 
an ordinance approving the record plat of Graves Linwood subdivision. Submitted. Motion by Robbie. Second. Seconded by Dan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-182, an ordinance approving the record plat of West Broad West Broadway property subdivision. So moved. Motion by Ryan. Second. Second by Nate. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-183, an ordinance approving the record plat of Blotner 5th subdivision. So moved. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Robbie. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Bill number 19-184. An ordinance approving the record plat of King's Highway subdivision. So moved. Motion by Ryan. Second. Second by Nate. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Bill number 19-185, an ordinance amending Schedule F of Section 26-247 and Section G of Section 26-249 of the City Code by establishing no parking any time along a portion of Normal Avenue in the City of Cape Girard, Missouri. Second. Motion by Dan. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Stacy. Any discussion? I think this is one that we should definitely discuss. Uh, you know, the students bring a good point, and then the citizens bring a good point. I, I actually would almost move to table this to another meeting so that we could get some more information on it and, uh, and, and hear from citizens a little bit more just so that we can wrap our minds around the issue a little bit more. Maybe discuss about the issues on Alta Vista. I, I, you know, that's something that since I don't drive Alta Vista every day, I wasn't aware that there were, you know, transient student usage on that street. And so just to kind of wrap our minds around this, I actually would make a motion to table this to a, to the next agenda so we can discuss further. I would second that. I think, you know, I have some questions that, you know, is there an alternative? Is there a, a, a compromise we can make uh, or, you know, potentially some signage or set back a little further off the crosswalks, uh, no parking, be a little bit more vigilant about it. Because my next question is how much traffic and parking are we pushing out into neighborhoods? Um, I'm, I'm not really a fan of, of um, uh, doing away with a lot of, I mean, this is a large piece of public parking that we're talking about. And, you know, in the in times where we are always talking about needing more public parking or buying parking lots, I know it's a different part of town, but we're still at a place where we need public parking. And I don't know that we can say we can take an entire street and say no parking. So I think there does there does need to be some uh, further discussion about it. We have a motion and a second to table. Any further discussion on the motion to table? Take the motion first. You have to take the motion to table first. Thank you. That's the motion. The motion to table. Any further discussion on the motion to table? The only the only piece that I would add uh, about tabling. Uh, one of the things the the university I know wanted to do a um, an information campaign with their existing students leaving before they left, so that they would come back in January to a. Uh, aware that there was a change um, if if you don't pass the first reading tonight then uh, second and third would be in January and so then that may not give them as much time as they would like to to let them know but that's obviously up to you but I, that was a piece that hadn't been pointed out so I want to make sure that it was pointed out I understand the timeline but I also understand that you know the citizens concerns and the community's concerns and and uh, one thing that that I still had a, a question about was there are how many legal parking places on normal? 48. 48. 48. Mm -hmm. But there are 70 something cars that park there. Mm -hmm. well, that's that's a big issue right there. You got that many people illegally parking every day. They ought to be ticketed every day. In my mind. DPS, how many tickets are right now on this 22? 
Well, you know, and I think at, at that point, if so, with the amount of, of car traffic, you get almost, a, you know, overseeing that and issuing tickets becomes a full time gig because you've got somebody flying into those spaces and flying out of those spaces. So I think that's one of the points to consider. But if they're, the, if they're not legal spaces, then, I mean, you can't park downtown like that and not get a ticket. Or get yeah. towed. Or get towed. <laughs> yeah. I get your point. They're moving in and out of those t those uh, spaces those faster spaces so than quick. you can probably sure. ticket them. But there has to be a way to do it without shutting down the entire street for parking. Well, a motion, we've got some motion at the table. And if there's no further discussion on the motion table, uh, is there? I mean, I'm kind of confused about if we should talk about it. We should wait until after passing the motion. To table well, now, but we're I, tabling I, a motion to be able to hear more from residents and look more into the situation. Well, and sure, I, would, I, I would. I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's someone here that wants to speak to what was just mentioned in terms of the the um, the, the the violations or lack of ticketing or, or whatever. Is there any? From the Department of Public Safety yeah. perspective, the University of Police, we. We practice those jurisdictional lines very um, conservatively. We address the things that occur on university property, whether their crimes are parking violations and parking violations that occur on the city street. That is not our prime focus. We, we usually allow that to be addressed by city police. Um, and we, I realize that they are much more charged with a lot of activity than we are. Um, and I can understand how that uh, that enforcement can be um, a great demand for, for that situation. So I want the council to realize that parking violations on city streets is not our prime charge or what we address. Right. Yeah, and I mean, then that, that that brings up the issue of what what good is is outlawing parking on that street going to do? I mean, if, if you know, if we're already half, you know, a third of the spaces on the street, if they're already parked illegally, I think what, what you do with with outlawing parking on the entirety of normal is that you make it easily to easy to surveil what is legal and what is not legal, and so if that way, if you see anybody on that street, you know it's in violation. Whereas if you just extend, you know, the parameters around a crosswalk or something like that, then you've got to get a measuring tape out. And if the bumper's inside the area and the other side, you know, it, it just makes for ease of use whenever it comes to surveilling what is legal and what's not legal. Well, the motion before us is to table it. I would ask if, it, you know, the staff, if there are any alternative options we can that can be proposed well at this point that's the reason for tabling it so they can look into that so all those in favor of the motion to the table aye, aye. any opposed so it's tabled uh, there are no appointments tonight uh the only the other business uh i was going to mention this uh uh, we already talked about this uh, and to encourage citizens to apply to the uh, liquor license review board. Uh, we have to uh, appoint two people uh, to that board. We have one current member who, who was appointed by us and uh, that person I have talked to, he has uh, said he will serve as chair of that board and, and uh, this, this first time around since he's experienced and he's been there. And uh, we will take applications and then we will uh, see those next meeting and we will make that appointment on December 16th. Mayor? Yes. Was, I think there might have been a... Scott, were, was there anything... Did did you guys miss being able to talk about something on... Oh, no, no. Was there anything... Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Just double checking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a motion to adjourn. Okay. Do I hear a second? Yeah. Second. Motion to merge second. All right, we're adjourned.